what's the number one way to improve thoracic mobility, and more importantly, maintain thoracic mobility. Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Institute. Happy Sunday, hope you're having a great weekend. And first, I wanna thank everyone who was at the Idea World Fitness Conference in LA this weekend. It was an amazing event. Thank you, Amy Boone Thompson and the entire Idea World team. Just amazing individuals. It was so great being there, sharing, interacting, and seeing so many fellow colleagues and presenters. So thank you so much for everyone who put on a great event. And most importantly, thank you to the health and fitness pros that came out to support the event, to be educated, empowered, and to share with like-minded individuals. Can't wait to be part of 2024 and all the great things IDEA has coming up in this coming year. Now, one of the things we talked about in our session on balance is the importance of breath. Breath is the number one way to improve thoracic mobility and more importantly, or as importantly, I should say, keep and maintain thoracic mobility. When your client is not breathing, when you and I are not breathing as well, as efficiently as we need to, as optimally as we need to, we will lose thoracic rotation. We will lose a lot of rotation through the neck as well as the shoulder because a lot of our accessory muscles of respiration, the scalenes, Actually, the scalenes are kind of primary muscles, but the SCM, the beta scapula, the pectoralis minor, a lot of these accessory muscles become overactive. So when we help our clients develop a more, a more optimal three-dimensional breathing strategy. Now, the reason I call it three-dimensional breathing is because it's about using the entire thoracal pelvic cylinder. From the first rib, put your fingers on your clavicles right here, go straight back. That's the top of your lungs. That's your first rib as you stop what stops you from pushing straight back. That's the first rib right there. Your lung is right underneath your fingers. You wanna breathe from here all the way down to your pelvic floor, the bottom of your pelvis. So find your sit bones, nobody's watching. <laughs> find the bones that you're sitting on or you would sit on. That's your sit bones, your pelvic floor is down there. You wanna make sure your breath gets all the way down there. So that's top to bottom. We wanna make sure our breath opens all the way out. The ribs open up like bucket handles like this and then they relax back down. We also wanna make sure that our breath goes front to back. What's up, my best friend from back home, Pete Rislow. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Thanks for being on. So that's three-dimensional breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing, all breathing is diaphragmatic breathing unless you're using a ventilator. If you're using on a ventilator, it's not diaphragmatic breathing because the ventilator is breathing for you. Hence the reason why so many people die once they get off the ventilator because the diaphragm atrophies and weakens so much. It's a whole nother topic. So one of the things that we taught in our seminar, in our workshop, about balance is how quickly and easily you can change thoracic rotation. If you type in, go to YouTube after you're done with this, not right now, after you're done with this, type in thoracic rotation or thoracic mobility. You will find millions of videos on thoracic mobility. And you'll see people doing all this kind of gyrations and all this crazy stuff. Some of it's actually good. <laughs> Some of it's actually good. To improve thoracic mobility. Some of these people are already hypermobile, so they don't need this and they don't, it, that wasn't what kept, got them and kept them mobile. However, one of the things that very few people are discussing is your breathing, your thoracic mobility is really, really a direct reflection of how well you're breathing. And I'll show you how quickly and easily you can check and change thoracic mobility. I'll put this down. First, I want you to do this with me. So unless you're driving, don't, well, you shouldn't be watching this anyway if you're driving. So here's what, what I want you to do is I want you to have a seat in a chair, sit right on your sit bones, feet flat on the floor. Put your hands on your front of your sternum like this, and without moving your sit bones or your pelvis, rotate to the right. So you always want to do a pre and post assessment to see what impact you're having on your clients. So, and how effective what you're doing is on your clients. So here we go. So my right rotation, pretty good, pretty free, nothing gets hung up. Left rotation, not as good. Feel a little pinching in my back as I rotate to my left. So left rotation, definitely more limited. Most of us have a side that's more limited for a variety of reasons. That's another topic for another day. Now, choose the side that is more limited. So my left side. So I'm going to take my right hand, put it on my left side of my rib cage. Angle this down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is stay nice and long as if I'm being pulled up from the back side of my head and neck, keeping a hand on the rib cage. Think about sending your breath into your hand. Okay, so if you're going to breathe in. Breathe out, breathing in and out through the nose. Nose is for breathing, mouth is for talking, so breathe in and out. 
through the nose, take three breaths. Stay long as you breathe out because the ribs open up and then the ribs come down as you breathe out. So breathe in, through, and breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the nose, relax the ribs. One more time, breathe in and breathe out. Now do just a little bit of thoracic rotation to that direction, okay? So just slight rotation. So I'm not forcing it, just nice and easy. Same thing, breathe in and out, in and out, three breaths. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, focusing the breath into the hand that you're holding the rib cage. One more time, breathe out, stay nice and long, rotate just a little bit more, not forcing it, not stretching, just rotating in the free range of motion that you have. Last time, three breaths. Send your breath into your hand, stay nice and long through the back side of your spine, so the head and neck, as well as the rib cage. Breathe in for three seconds, pause, breathe out for about six seconds. We're going a little bit quicker just for the sake of this video. Go one more breath, and then breathe out. Stay long and relax, okay? Reset your feet, or the feet should already be flat. You're on your sit bones, put your hands back here. Check the side you did not rotate towards, or I should say that you did not breathe and or rotate towards. That still feels good. In fact, it feels actually a little bit better. Come back to center. Now rotate to the other direction, and much better. Much freer range of motion. I can get a lot further. And again, we're looking for pure axial rotation. So again, you should feel a difference in your thoracic rotation. So, what did you notice? Put it in the chat box. Chat box, there's no chat box. <laughs> we're not on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what did you notice? Put it in the feed here. Did you notice a difference? Did you even try it? If not, go back and try it because it was pretty cool. As during the, during the workshop, I had individuals doing this and everybody's like, whoa, oh, wow, oh, it's magic. It's not magic. It's just you got rid of a lot of the myofascial, I shouldn't say myofascial, you got rid of some of the overactivity of your superficial muscles. So the abdominal obliques will really lock your thoracic rotation down and your mobility down. Your erectors, your lats, all these big muscles that cross the thorax and spine and pelvis are very big contributors to why so many clients lose thoracic mobility, spinal mobility, as well as pelvis and hip mobility. So hopefully you notice a difference. If not, then you probably need a little bit of myofascial release and or just more specifics in how you're breathing. Because again, we would do myofascial release prior to breathing, but again, it's just a way to show you how quickly and easily you can change thoracic mobility by number one, becoming more aware, and number two, improving the strategy of how your client is breathing, and number three, essentially teaching them more a more optimal control strategy. And obviously you wanna take this into the functional exercise patterns. Push, pull, rotate, do all those functional patterns that you already do with success, Again, with a more optimal breathing strategy, because again, the breath is the foundation, is, a, is the ability to maintain that alignment, or gives you the ability to maintain the alignment of the rib cage over top of the pelvis, and use a more optimal rotation strategy for walking, for running, and for performance. If you're doing even something like pickleball, which I just did, not so successfully in my last game, <laughs> he got blanks 11-0. I'm, I'm blaming my fatigue, because I haven't played in a, in a week or so. My cardiovascular was down today. <laughs> No, I just stink at it. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. If you're looking for more information, check out the Anatomy of Breathing. It's a three-part series that my fellow anatomy geek, Jill Leary, and I did to discuss the anatomy of the thorax and the respiratory muscles to take you through this information so you understand what actually drives optimal breathing. And then we took you through not only just the information because we want, we want you to be able to apply it. So we take you through how to assess your clients for breathing using thoracic rotation, for example. We show you the correct exercises to improve the myofascial release as well as the strategy of how we actually teach our clients how to breathe. There's many different ways. We have a very successful way as well. And then more importantly, how do you incorporate this into functional activity? Because again, a lot of your clients are breathing themselves right into a suboptimal breathing strategy or dysfunctional breathing strategy. So how do you take this information and apply it to the functional patterns that will actually improve performance, the posture, movement, and most importantly, their performance. So the link is by this video. Check it out. We would love to see you. Two Anatomy Geeks is a wonderful community of like-minded individuals who are just looking to up-level their knowledge, their skill set, and help more clients with this information. And again, I'm off to church. Hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. If there's anything we can do to help support you along your journey, feel free to reach out. And again, go out there, be the light, 
your clients are looking for someone just like you. Actually, your clients have already found you, so they're looking for somebody just like you, and your potential clients are looking for someone like you to help lead them, someone who accepts them for who they are, someone who allows them the power to connect with their bodies and learn their learn about more optimal posture movement and how it can actually transform their lives and piggyback into other areas of their life as well. So keep doing what you're doing. If there's any way we can support you, please reach out. Let us know. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Institute. Make a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.